thank you for joining us today. We bring you greetings from our senior pastors. I want to sincerely appreciate our senior pastors, Reverend Professor Gregory Erabo, my father and my mentor, and our mother in the house, Reverend Mrs. Ayodele Erabo, who these two people, they have nurtured, they have mentored, they have sown, and they have built me particularly, and every one of us in this house, they have labored over our soul. And I want to thank them for this singular privilege. And to give a synopsis of some of the things I've learned in the church. Today, I'll be talking about lessons learned from service in the ministry. Can we pray? Father, we just want to appreciate you. We want to thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence, to learn at your feet. Thank you for being with us. Thank you because you are with us today and your presence will be mighty in our presence. In this tabernacle, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Over the years, and um, I'm sure each and every one of us, as we come in through the doors, we have learned a lot of things from this pulpit. We have, you know, listened to messages that have changed our lives. And, um, you know, the Bible wants us to, when we hear those words, we are to ponder on the things that we have heard. You know, the Bible says of Mary that she continued to treasure all these things in her heart and to ponder them. Because when we ponder these things, when we ruminate on them, we are able to act on them. We are able to, you know, fulfill the precepts and the plans of God. Now, today we are going to be looking at service. Now, service is not just restricted to the church. Service is key to the success of every institution we find ourselves. It could be in the church or the ministry. It could be in the secular, in, the orga in organizations around the world. It could be at your workplace, in the community, in your family, to your father, to your mother, and wherever we find ourselves. Service is a recurring thing. It's something that is key to every institution. And it seems the art revolves around service. You know, it's as if it's a call. Like the art is calling, the world is calling. Everywhere you get to, there is a call for service. And so it's not just service in the church, but service wherever we find ourselves. I'll quickly take a look at um, a, a verse in the Bible by our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our greatest demonstration of service. You know, for all you care, he could have stayed back in heaven. He had everything. But he chose to serve humanity, and he came down to us. He chose to die for us. That is service. And in Luke chapter 22, verse 25, 25 to 27, it says, The king of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as one who serves? That is Jesus' own um, manifesto. That is him saying, I am here to serve you. And he is calling each and every one of us to that lifestyle. You know, what our pastor calls servant leadership. 
you know, you are serving the people everywhere you get to. In your business, you are serving people. At home, in your family, you are serving people. And so our Father has taught us, he has demonstrated it over and over again, that true life is all about service. Now, what is service? To serve is to perform duties or services for another person or an organization. The truth about service is that it is not about you. It is about others. And Jesus is trying to tell us that that is how he wants our lives to be. Not me mentality. Not I every time. Oh, my own. What will I eat? Have you ever thought about it? That there are people out there that cannot eat. Is there someone around you that cannot help himself or herself? Christ is calling us to service in all areas of life. We have been called to service, but not just to service, but also to faithful service. You know, when the Bible says that a faithful man, who can find? It comes to terms, it, you know, it lets us know that some people can serve, but they don't serve faithfully. They don't put their thought to it, or they are looking for something in their service. But God is calling us to faithful service. Lewis Carroll, a writer and a mathematician, said, one of the deep secrets of life is that all that is really worth doing is what we do for others. All that is really worth doing is what you do for another person. Albert Treza said, the only ones among you who will really be happy are those who will have sought and found how to serve. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be joyful? Then look for someone to serve. Look for a service to render. Martin Luther King said, life's persistent and most urgent question is, what are you doing for others? I'm sure a lot of us will know Martin Luther King. And he's telling us that life's most important question is asking, what are you doing for others? Not what are you doing for yourself? Because yourself will come into the picture eventually. Praise the Lord. I'd like to tell us this morning that comfort zone is not for giants. Comfort zone is not for giants. You want to excel. You want to do well. You want to serve. Then you have to roll up your sleeves. Get in the walk and serve. Because what you are looking for, you know, it's very easy for us to sit in our rooms and paint dreams. You know, have vision. This is what I want to become. This is what I want to be. But interestingly, whatever we are going to be lies in service. Praise the Lord. And so if you want to remain in your comfort zone, you want to stay on your phone and press phone all day, and then you want the money to walk through to walk through the door and meet you. That's not going to work. The pathway to your dream lies in service. Praise the Lord. We could see the extent that Jesus valued service. You know, when he was 12, and they were looking for him, he told them, why did you seek me? That's in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Don't you know that I have, to, I have to be about my father's business? It was just 12 years. Which means service does not exclude anybody. If you are a child at home, you are supposed to serve your parents. That's what pastor taught us. Serve your father and your mother. So it's not like you are too small or you are too young to serve. And you can't be too old to serve either. You know, I had the story of, of, you know, this, either in Netherlands or one of these in, um, European countries that, you know, they have this habit of you can save, you know, you can save acts of kindness. You know, when you are young, you go and serve elderly people. You are saving it in the bank of the country. So when you are old, 
the country is going to look at the bank of service you have rendered. And then they will get a younger person to come and serve you in your old age. That is service. And that is what God is calling us to. Praise the Lord. For us to truly serve, for us to be effective in our service, the very first thing we must note is that we must single-mindedly follow our leader. Praise the Lord. Single-mindedly follow the leader. I want to paint a picture in your minds. Imagine an arrow, a big arrow. Now imagine several arrows following it. If you look at that arrow, they have a target they are going to. I don't know, you know, some of us could have watched some films in which, in which they would, um, they have this um, bow that can shoot about six arrows at the same time. If you remember, that arrow, the first one leads, two follows, three follows, four follows, and it goes like that. So imagine when the arrows follow one another, they will hit the targets. But now, let's paint another scenario in which you release the ball and then two others, they go up, down, this way, that way, and then the one that is heading looks back and then there's nobody following it. We are not going to achieve anything. And that is the importance of single-mindedly following the leader in our service. In any organization, in this church, we have been called to follow our pastor. He gives an instruction. Imagine if all of us obey. Imagine the effect, the power of the effects that we will have. Oh, there's evangelism. 1,000 people on the streets. Imagine the harvest. Oh, we need to clean this church. Everybody comes in. Imagine the speed with which we will achieve. Now, look at it. If one or two persons are doing this work, they will get weary, they will get tired. But we can multiply that, those efforts. We can, you know, we can divide the work and it will go around and everybody is happy. This is what God is calling us to this morning. It's what I'm learning and it's what all of us should learn. Praise the Lord. In our service, we must align with our set man. We must align with the leader wherever we find ourselves. At our place of work, in the institution we work in, don't be known as the rebel in your institution. You know, like a pastor will tell us that you should, you know, you want to change the status quo. You just came into an institution. I can remember there was a particular brother that came into the church some times ago, and then he came into the choir, and then he told me that, oh, you know, the choir, the way they do things. I'm here, I want to change, you know, I want to change things. <laughs> I'm sorry, the brother didn't last in choir. Why? Because he was not ready to submit under authority. He didn't last in the choir. He did not last in the church. I still see him around because he keeps going around. And that is what rebellion does to people. You never find a place. You never make an impact. Everything is just in your head. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. Which voice are you hearing? Which voice are you listening to that is not allowing you to, allowing you to serve with a true heart? Now, there are very many voices you can hear. You can hear the dissenting voices. The dissenting voices are those who disagree with and disobey every instruction. As the instruction is landing, even before the instruction lands, they have already made up their mind they are going to disobey. There is no way you are going to serve if you are listening to dissenting voices. Then we have the derailing voices. Those who sway you from the mission by their words and their actions. Oh, you're always going to church. Is it church you will eat? 
They are going to say those things to you. But if you really want to serve, you must not listen to derailing voices. Then we have the distracting voices. Those who take actions that distract the mission. It's in every organization. It's not just the church. It's everywhere. They do things, you know, they create chaos. And in the process of creating chaos, they take our eyes off the mission that we have been called to do. This is the mission. We have been called to communicate divine truth and bring hope to our generation. And then you create a, a chaos around yourself, around some things, and then we leave the mission and we are settling matters that don't matter. Don't listen to distracting voices. We also have the disgruntled voices. Avoid disgruntled voices. Those are the people that have grudges against the mission. There is nothing you do for them that is good enough. Nothing. Don't listen to disgruntled voices. And then avoid dispirited voices. Dispirited voices are those who have lost enthusiasm and hope. You know, there are some people that they are not ready to serve. They have lost hope. Maybe, well, maybe by virtue of their experiences, they have just lost the zeal. And then they just want to pull other people down. They come to you, all they do, all they ever tell you is to complain. They have lost the zeal. They are weary. And rather than trying to tap in for strength, they are going to draw you away. Praise the Lord. Finally, don't listen to disillusioned voices. These are those who have lost trust and faith in the mission. Paraventure, they came into the mission. They didn't, they had something in mind they wanted to get. Oh, they came for a wife, they came for, a, you know, they came for something. But because the mission is not about them, they didn't get what they wanted, and then they want to pull other people out of the mission. Don't listen to disillusioned voices. People who have lost faith in God, like pastor will say, don't, don't fight against God. Don't listen to those voices. And interestingly, those voices don't necessarily have to be outside you. They can be inside you too. So which means there could be a time in our service to God that you get dispirited, you get disillusioned, you, get, you are getting distracted by the things, shut down the voice inside. Our inner ears must be sharp to sift out these voices. We must learn to pick them and rebuke them immediately. Get behind me, Satan, in this service of the kingdom, in the service of my master. Get behind me. Praise the Lord. And you know, when your mind is crowded by these voices, we must take a pause to carefully sift through the voice, voices, to hear the voice of the master, the voice of the, our Lord, to reposition and realign, and then to follow. You reposition, and then you follow. Because there are times when, because you have heard all this, rumblings inside you, you are beginning to derail. But catch yourself immediately. Reposition. Realign and follow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We must remember that the evidence of our followership and service is obedience. We listen to instructions. We obey instructions. We strengthen the hands of our leaders. We are not ashamed of our leader. And we stand for what he stands for. That is what makes the ministry work. That is what makes organizations work. You know, I try to look at organizations around the world. How are they doing it? Why are they this successful? What is the issue? And I realized that for every franchise, for every new organization, they follow the formula of the initial one. Simple. That's all. We have a formula. This is what we use, and that is what everybody follows across the world. And then you see remarkable and resounding success. You know, close home, look at Coca-Cola, for instance. They tell you that nobody knows the formula that they mix for us. But 
It's the same across the world. And look at big ministries, look at big churches. They replicate, you know, the vision and the mission that they got from the leader. Look at Disney World, for instance. The owner died a long time ago. But they kept to the principles that they, he has laid down. And they stood by it and they had expansion. That is what we are being called to in our service. We have a mission in this house. We are all expected to read the mission, to imbibe the mission, to memorize the mission, to live out the mission, and then to make exploits, do exploits with the mission. That is who we are supposed to be. Praise the Lord. And not just that, we must give a platform. In our service, we must give a platform for the word to spread. For instance, I remember that um, some of these um, savings investment things that they do, they give them something. For instance, carry wise. They will give them some of these things. It looks like stickers. They will give you plenty for you to paste everywhere that you do carry wise. That is the same in the ministry of God. We must give a platform for the word to spread. The work you are doing, you should be able to tell people about it. Pastor releases the word. Our service, our faithful service is that we take this word and we do what? We spread it out. I love my pastor. It's not by mouth. It is not by mouth. It is action. And if you stand in front of a pastor's office or you go into his office every day and you keep telling him, ah, pastor, you know I love you. You know I believe in this vision. You know I love you. And you are not doing the basics that we have been required to do. Then what is the essence of our service? Praise the Lord. So let's give a platform for the word. We share, we comment, we post, we tag our friends. We are not ashamed to declare that we, what we stand for to the whole world. I can remember one of the meetings we had. One of the brothers rose up and said that the reasons why people don't share is because they are afraid to be known as a Christian on their page. And I was shocked. We are Christians. And then on social media, we are ashamed to declare that we are Christians. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. When we faithfully serve in the house of the Lord, wherever we find ourselves, we find joy. Service brings joy. The joy of service is the sweetest, holiest joy possible. Tago said, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. I'll take that again. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. When you serve faithfully, when you serve truly, when you serve with the whole of your heart, when you serve with abandon, you will find joy. And this has been my experience. This has been the experience of the people, you know, that have served, that, you know, I've been privileged to, you know, work with or, you know, hear from in this household. You see them around us. This has been their testimony. This is my testimony. That when you serve God with the whole of your heart, you find joy there. Those who will truly find joy, like Abba Treza said, are those who have learned to serve. Finally, I would like to say that when you serve with a true heart, God will work it out for your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. There is this fear that every one of us has. Everybody has it. That 
what if I decide to put myself fully into this work? What will I get? Who will handle my own problem? Who will serve my own cause? Who will do my own? Who will train my children? Who will do this? Who will do that for me? Everybody has that fear. But brothers and sisters today, I want you to know that if you truly serve, God will work it out for you. There is a wisdom that you get when you serve that makes things work out for you. Praise the Lord. There is a wisdom that God gives you that is different from the people that are outside that are not serving. That makes your own work out. And that is the difference when you serve in the house of God. He undertakes for you. Where things are difficult, he has a way of just making your own way. I know people who have, you know, applied and applied and applied and applied for a position. Me, I don't get time. I'm sorry. Because the truth is, I, I don't have time to be doing that. Because for one application, you spend up to three hours. I heard of someone that they said has had up to 200 applications. Do you think it is a joke for me to click in just a single application and I got the job? Praise the Lord. It is not a joke. It is not common. And that is what God does for you. Where everybody strives and stresses and, you know, they keep striving, they're stressing. Because you are in the service, because you are in the plan, because you are following God, because you are obeying the instructions from the set man, your lives, God plots it out. God plots it. And then it becomes a miracle, even to you yourself. Brothers and sisters, what do you want from God? You think God cannot give you a good husband, that it's out there on the social media. Come and serve God. I think we have a testimony in the house. Praise the Lord. We have a testimony of service in the house. Praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. It is in the service. And I remember that when I came into this church, I remember that our senior pastor told one of our sisters in the church that he has not seen anybody that served God that God did not attend to. God is going to attend to you. God is going to work out your life. I just want to encourage us. Let's come into this house. Let's serve with joyful abandon. Let's serve with joyful abandon. Let's just commit it all to God and put it to God if he will not sort you out. Because I know God will work it out. He will work it out for you in your workplace. He will work it out for you in, in, at your job, the job you're looking for. He will fulfill that dreams in your heart. He will make your life beautiful. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise up to pray? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is busy at work on our case when we serve in his presence. When we follow our leader single-heartedly. Let's just take this song. Go, we'll work it out. God, we work it out. God, we work it out. One thing I know, one thing I found. God, we work it out. God, we work it out. God, we work it out. One thing I know, one thing I found is that God will work it out. Let's just go into the presence of the Lord. I just want you to, you know, have a faith in your heart this morning. Just believe that God is working it out. Just tell it to God that you are going to serve Him with the whole of your heart, with joyful abandon. And then you are going to trust him to work out your life. He will work it out. He will plot it out by himself. Oh God, 
Rika Sanda Yega Lege Masota Ya Eke Se Te 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 Le Bosha Oh God, you will work it out for your people if, even as they align with you, as they align with your son in this ministry. Lord, you will work out their life and it will be beautiful. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. Thank you, Father, for your word that we have learned. Father, help us, oh God, to serve you, to look up to you alone, oh God, and to serve you with joyful abandon. Help us to be faithful in our service. And Lord, even as we commit everything to you, our lives to you, please work out our lives according to your plans. Thank you, Father, because you will do this and so much more. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Thank you. One thing I know, one thing I found. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you serve, God also will take care of you. God will undertake for you. So when you serve, don't think you are a fool. And don't think you are foolish. Just do what you are to do. Obey God and leave the rest to God. Praise the Lord. Let's stretch our hand towards our sister. Where is she? Aha. Let's stretch our hand towards her and bless her that the Almighty God will replenish her, that the strength she has expended, the Lord will fill her back. The virtue, God will fill her back with the virtue. The mighty hand of God will continually be upon her life. Her testimony will continually to stand strong and for her favor in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that the Almighty God will uphold her and strengthen her and guide her wherever she goes that the mighty hand of God will never leave her alone, that the glory of the Lord will overshadow her, that goodness and mercy will be the portion of her, of her life and of her household in the name of Jesus, that God Almighty will shield her, protect her, and uphold her with his mighty right hand, that she will never lack any good thing, and that the glory of the Lord will continually overshadow her. Thank you, mighty God, for your word. And I pray that this word will ring in many lives for many years to come and will be a guiding principle in the lives of the people. Father, we thank you. Father in heaven, we thank you for your daughter you have used to minister to your people this morning. Thank you, Lord, because she's an embodiment of what she's saying. It's not just say, it's not saying, do what I say, but she's a living example. I pray, my Father and my God, you will undertake for her in Jesus' name. I shall proceed, Lord, for um, a, a greater place. I pray, Lord God Almighty, this spirit will not depart from her in Jesus' name. Amen. Your goodness and mercy will continually be her portion. Amen. Be with her children, help the husband, help the family, and let them be shining lights wherever they go in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. It's time for Holy Communion. Luke chapter 22, verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. 
For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless this bread and we bless this wine. And as we take it today in remembrance of you, Lord, we shall be blessed and your glory and your power will rest upon us in Jesus' name. Maybe among the congregation, if you feel that you feel in your heart that you are not worthy to take it, I want you to confess your sin before God right now that God will cleanse you. He said, come unto me. So this morning, just bow down. Ask Lord to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness that you might be a partaker of this bread and the wine, which is a representation of his body and blood that was shed for us. Father in heaven, I pray for your children. I pray in any way they have sinned against you and they are not worthy this morning. We are pleading the blood of Jesus that it will avail for them. And Lord, I pray for cleansing of every sin, cleansing of every heart this morning, that by the virtue of your blood that was shed on the cross, they will be made fit to partake of this bread and wine. Thank you, Lord, for doing so. Thank you for your forgiving power. Thank you for cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Take, eat, and drink in Jesus' name. 